Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name's James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, in this week's episode, we're going to look at a balayage correction. I had this young client come to me. She'd had her hair done only a couple of weeks previously. Um, she'd gone home to North London to have her hair done and they had given her, well, you'll see for yourself what happened. I don't want to speak ill of anybody's work, but it speaks for itself. So I hope you enjoy this corrective process as always. I don't have a huge amount to say in this intro this week. I know that I can waffle on for England. And I know you kindly say in the comments that you love my waffling. It's where all the knowledge is at. But we'll save that for the tutorial. I would hope you have a wonderful week and do me the massive favour of hitting that thumbs up button, commenting down below, subscribing if you haven't already. And a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed. We are close to 40,000 subscribers now, which is mind-blowingly amazing. Um, so the next goal is 50,000 subscribers. I am looking forward to hitting that milestone next year at some point. So thank you for your support along the way on achieving these goals. Everything that you do, watch the videos, like the videos, comment on the videos has all contributed. So this is as much you putting in your end of the bargain as it is me making these videos. And a big thank you to all of my Patreons who support the channel amazingly well by contributing to the running and the costs that are involved in making these videos and in return get an extra layer of life of hair education. So if you'd like to be part of that then please head down to the description, click the link that says become a Patreon of the life of hair and get signed up. I love, love, love to educate people and being given the opportunity to teach so many people makes me incredibly happy. Have a wonderful week and I shall see you again very, very soon. So here we have our starting point for this corrective balayage process. And I obviously don't need to say much about what we need to fix here. It's quite obvious. Um, this was done, I think, two weeks prior to, or three weeks prior to coming to see me. Um, so, you know, really just wanted to blend it in a bit more, create a bit more uh, diffusion, and it just blend with her natural colour. She's got a little money piece kind of going on around the front, which we do paint um, as we go through. Let's talk a little bit about uh, pre-section, simple pre-section as always. I don't like to complicate things with pre-sections. Uh, diagonals uh, used here for extra softness. So four quadrants, straight down the centre back, diagonal section from the top of the ear through to the nape area. Now we're using the from our Power Painter here to get maximum uh, product onto the hair and then just hand blending these sections up towards the root area. Um, and then on these lower sections, I just slab saturate the entire section to get as much colour in there as humanly possible. Um, let me talk about product quickly because product in this particular instance is really, really important to me because I'm using a freehand clay lightener. It's the Redkin one that I've used in many of my videos. The beauty of this Redkin freehand clay lightener, especially when you put a bonder in it, is that it's really, really easy going on the condition. Obviously, not many weeks ago, it was bleached. Uh, it was bleached quite light, but, you know, obviously it needs a little bit more work to make it blend. So for me, it's really, really mega important that we use a product that we can overlap. And you'll see later in the technique, uh, there's some very heavy kind of striping going on, um, high contrast pieces that I just want to diffuse away. So... I've used this uh, Redkin freehand clay lightener, 20 volume uh, with the Olaplex in it. Uh, Redkin don't have a bonder anymore for me to use. So this is Olaplex in this for anybody who is interested. And here's those sections that are on about that are pretty stripy. And 
you know, to individually paint those pieces in between, we're going to get some overlapping. So for me, it's just about kind of creating a much more seamless uh, blend throughout these sections and, you know, using the hand blending technique, which I absolutely love for spreading out the saturation lighter towards the roots and then, uh, you know, heavier towards the midlands and ends if we need that lift. But in this specific instance, we just need a pretty even list root to tip. We want the product to look like we've iced a cake. So we can't see any of the cake on the inside. It's not one of those trendy naked cakes where you can see the cake inside the icing. We want it to be royal icing, no hair visible beneath the painting that you have done. And it's really, really important. The saturation of a balayage is the secret to its success. So you've got to make sure that you saturate, saturate, saturate. Obviously, you don't want to press on the hair too hard because you will push the product through the section, especially higher up the head, and you'll create blobs and demarcation and all those kind of things that you don't want. A balayage, certainly where the hair is less movable further towards the scalp, wants to be a nice light application of product and then it get thinner towards the middle ends and ends. Really, really critical to a successful balayage technique. Always remember that guys, it is very, very easy to get heavy handed when you're trying to learn to get more product onto the hair. Now, one thing you'll note is that I use the side of the brush to apply product. So I'm using sideways vertical strokes up and down. I'm standing to the side of the section and I am using vertical strokes and I'm using the side of the brush to apply product. The side of the brush does a great job of applying product and the teeth of a brush do a great job of distributing the saturation should you need it. Now I'm using my fingers to distribute the saturation here so I don't need that extra layer of using the bristles of the brush to spread the product out. But in the instance of creating beautifully seamless balayage techniques, just be very aware that the side of the brush is the answer to getting on more product. We're moving through this technique pretty swiftly. And as you can see, we're moving higher up the sections. We're creating a little V shape down towards the root area. And this is just kind of added softness and diffusion towards the root. And it just stops each section being like a slab, like the first three or four sections were. But you don't necessarily need to do this on each of the sections. It's kind of a personal preference thing. I've decided to do it in this specific instance based on the fact that I just want it to be a touch softer. But around the crown area, it might be more important. It depends on how the crown falls. Remember, when we're doing a balayage, we should be working with the natural fall of the hair, not against it. Just because we're using a set pattern to apply the color, um, it doesn't mean that we can go in without deciding what the growth patterns are going to do around the crown area. That is very, very important. I will hasten to add that it's very difficult for you to see the roots of these sections due to the fact that I had just got a new camera to film these with and I didn't realize kind of how to position it. So it's not perfect, but um, you get the idea. And these are just basically diagonal backward sections all the way up to the highest point of the head. There's kind of no change. We just continue all the way up. Sometimes I take a triangle section out of the crown area. You will have seen that before. In this specific instance, I didn't do that. So I just wanted to clarify that because you couldn't quite see. Um, the same premise was used throughout the whole back sections. Now we're into the side sections and we're working with a horizontal section and we're doing the slab painting technique where we've just got the whole section and saturated the surface of the section with our lightener and we're hand blending towards the root area, you know, just to give us that maximum diffusion at the root and up to where the hair doesn't move. One thing to think of when you're doing a balayage, especially when you're getting closer to the scalp is that the more blended each of your sections need to be, especially as you get closer to the scalp because the hair is less movable. And that's when things start to creep in that, you know, demarcations and blobs and stuff like that, because the hair is very easy to press through because it's very, very taut in that area. Now, 
one thing I know that someone's going to comment on is the fact I'm covering this with foil. Remember, foil does not amplify the heat unless it's very, very close to the scalp. The heat from the scalp only resonates about one centimeter. This foil is simply applied to the hair to prevent the product from drying out. Now, I know it's a clay lightener and effectively it shouldn't dry out, but I'm just covering my back because I do want to get the most lift out of the 20 volume. And 20 volume isn't the most efficient of lighteners with a Redkin clay lightener. I know there are other more powerful clay lighteners out there, but Redkin's is very gentle and that's why I'm using it in this specific instance. You'll note on this section that I'm painting at the moment, I've just painted one side of the section and I've created a diagonal backwards line towards the ends. This is to give us kind of more lightness around the face and blend into that money piece that she's got previously. You'll also note that I come round and repaint the money piece as well. We'll have a little look at that in the sections to come. You can just see there that I accidentally got some bleach on her hair. Um, and that's just because there was a little bit of bleach on my comb, but I combed it through and combed it through and thinned out the saturation. I will deal with it further in a moment, but if you do get lightener on places you didn't want to get it, make sure you thin it out so it's not as efficient at lightening the hair where you've accidentally put it. Just comb it off, comb it off, pick it off, whatever you need to do to it to sort it out. I'll show you in a little while a section that I did that wasn't perfect and how I went about fixing that section. Each of these subsequent sections are like an A shape in the way that we're painting the point of light higher in the middle and then coming triangular down towards the edges. This is just to create another kind of diffused point of light as we work through this section. I particularly like using a variation of different points of light throughout my techniques if I feel it will help. And in this specific instance, I felt like it would. You've probably just seen me drop my foil. That's my least favorite thing about foil. It just doesn't stick very well. So here I am painting the money piece, elevate the, the hair out from the head 45 degrees and just painting back in towards the root area just to give that money piece a little bit more pop around her face. So here we are back in the fringe area working on the money piece on the opposite side. Got one of those kind of split bang you know fringe jobbies and you know with this kind of product you can be pretty liberal you don't have to be too kind of precise and perfect you can just lay it on and diffuse the product out it, they're so made for this job um, and also i haven't matched them up absolutely in exactly the same spot coming from the head because actually it's quite side parted and so i'm allowing for that front section to kind of swish across and down. You'll see in the finished result that it actually turns out really, really nicely. So just working through the sections here up towards the crown area, I specifically showed these sections because in the back, as I said, I just worked on the diagonal up towards what would be a little triangle section in the four quadrants. And you can see that little triangle section at the top. I keep bumping into it right now. That is one of those sections that, you know, some people say, well, what do you do with that? Well, in just a second, I'll show you exactly how I went to paint that section. So here's the bit where I made my saturation too heavy in one area. Um, and I basically came in with the tooth of my comb, hooked it on and thinned out the saturation, picked a bit out and then just carried on blending. It's just a great way of fixing a little problem. Everyone makes little problems. We just need to know how to fix them. Now on to my final section. And as I was saying, this is that triangle section at the top. And I simply paint from the, the crest of the point of light all the way through to the ends. Super simple and really, really makes this technique really, really straightforward to follow through and execute all the way to the end. You don't have to think about you know, too many detailed placement sections. We do want the hair to be a natural fall. That is really important, but we also want to make our life easy as well. So now we have moved on to the pinking phase, the pinking phase. Wow, I like it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we just use a magenta shade, uh, which magenta is pink with a little speck of blue in it. 
um, and we created a very, very nice, cool, deeper pink shade, just to give it a bit more longevity. Obviously, you've got to remember that these direct dyes tend to fade. The longevity can be very, very short-lived. Um, so I really wanted to give it a bit more depth to give her a bit more time with it without needing to maintain it. So I hope you've enjoyed this look. Here's the finished result. That little money piece, nice and blended again, completely different from the before picture. Um, as you just saw before the end result popped up on the screen. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll catch you again in another episode of The Life of Hair.